Hi there, and welcome to part five of Appendix C from Matrices, Vectors, and 3D Math, a game programming approach with MATLAB. And again, as in with this whole sequence of MATLAB demonstration videos, we'll be grabbing a couple files from the code repository under the Appendix C, a quick guide to MATLAB zipped folder. All right? And in this particular uh, chapter, we're going to talk about input and output with the figure. Um, throughout this course in the homework problems and some of the projects, there you'll be interacting with graphs, clicking on places, um, sending information to the graphs. And so it's important that, that we know how to get input and output um, interactions with the, with the figure or a graph. So that's what this is about. So the first thing, uh, the first file I'd like you to grab is example input graph dot m. And while you're in the repository there, you might as well grab the next one, which is, uh, let's see, example output graph. So first we're going to do input, then we'll do output with these um, demonstration uh, programs. Okay, so let, let me just run example input graph. So we'll see what this does. So I um, click run, and the, the figure is floating. I'm actually going to nest it so that I can get everything all in one place. So there's my command window, my program, the, the script editor, and then the figure all in one. So you'll notice in the command window it's saying click somewhere on the graph. And when you do, the, you see some crosshairs and you get to click wherever you want. So I'll click right uh, there. And it put, you chose the point, it actually gave me the point that I chose. So as we're interacting with graphs and animations um, throughout the rest of this book, um, this will be very handy. Okay, so how did I do it? How did we get this? So the first thing I did was I cleared the command window and the figure window. And basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a uh, sine curve here, right? Uh, sorry, it's not a sine curve, it's a cosine curve. And so my x values will be 0 to 2 pi, and I'll have 100 of them created with the lin space command. So I have 100 x values from 0 to 2 pi evenly spaced, y will just be the cosine of that vector, right? And then I just plot x and y using the plot command with a black line, and I make the line a little wider than normal. I'm going to do hold on so that whatever I'm going to graph later doesn't erase uh, um, what was on there prior. And I display this. This is the display command that sends information to the command window. Click somewhere on the graph. And here's the critical piece. This x, y equals get the g input is get input so it's getting one point from the graph get input one one point if there were two or three or four you'd click a bunch of points um, and when it does that this get input returns um, a pair an order pair or, or, or an array of two values the x value from where you clicked and the y value and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plot that x value and that y value with a red dot and I'm going to give it a big marker size 20 and then I'm going to print the message to the graph and I'm using this um, function called text and text is used to place um, text somewhere on the graph and that position where are the first two arguments so it's going to be x plus 0.1 so basically wherever I clicked I'm going to move to the right 0.1 units but I'm going to keep the y value the same so that my text appears directly to the right of my dot as it does over here you chose the point right and then I do a um, text one the print the um, this this s printf I'm using this the s printf because I need to include some variable values, some numerical values in my text, right, in my string. So to do that, I need to create that string which contains numerical values from my variables using this sprintf. And, and I have to um, emphasize again here that you're never going to remember this syntax. And you're not even going to really remember the name of these commands. Just remember what you can do and that there's some demonstration files some in this repository. And then you sort of root around until you find what you need. Or Google it, one of the two. Um, so you can use this sprintf 
to include numerical variable values in a string. And so that creates the text, and this text command places what I called text1 in this location right here. So now I'm keeping the x value and I'm dropping the y. So I'm actually starting where the x was, but I'm going y minus 0.1, so I'm down here. So that's how I got this, um, this, um, this text within the graphics, right? Um, OK, so see it again. You, you click Run. It will give you a little message. When you use that get input, the G input, that's really what this one, this, this demonstration is all about. It creates the crosshairs and it returns into the program where those crosshairs were clicked. And then you can do with that um, all sorts of things. In this case, I use that to output some uh, information to the graph. Right? Okay, so how about some more output to the graph? So we're going to do example output graph. Right, so run that, see what you get. And what you get is this, uh, this sort of messy but you know detailed uh, sign plot. Right, and I have an X label, Y label. There's different fonts, different colors. I have a giant triangle where that point is. So, so remember that you can do all this stuff. I'm going to go over the syntax and the functions used, but you probably won't remember it. Just remember that there is this file out here, output that'll help you sort of do this sort of thing. So I start off clearing everything. I create my x vector is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. My y vector is going to be the sine of x, right? So that gives me my initial curve, right? And x1 will just be pi, right? That's 3.1415 right here, right? And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot that curve, I'm making the line width 3. The default color is blue, so it stays blue. And then I'm going to do hold on so that other stuff I stick in there won't um, make it go away. And then I'm going to plot that point, x1. And actually, the square brackets are optional. I usually put them in there because the plot command wants um, vectors. But if it is just a single number, you, you don't actually have to put the square brackets. Um, so it's going to plot x1 and sine of x1 with a black, that's the k, d is diamond. All right, so there's the black diamond, marker size 20, so it's a big black diamond. And you can do a marker face green. So notice it is a black diamond. It's just filled with green. Um, I put a title with some font size and some color, X label, Y label. The default, if you don't do any fancy um, adjusting to the font or color, looks like this Y label over here. You can make it bigger in different colors with font size and color. And then finally, how did I get this? This was also demonstrated in the previous um, code. I'm going to create the text, which is going to contain some string. This point is backslash n creates a new line. And this is where I insert the numerical values from my variables. I'm going to have a float rounded to two decimals. It's going to print that, and then another float rounded to two decimals. Those will be x1 and sine x1, respectively. So that creates that string, right? And then text places it within the graph in this location here, all right? And then you can change the font size if you want. So you can get pretty um, sophisticated, pretty fancy. You can do all different formats and styles. And again, you're not going to remember all these different uh, commands. You know, you're not going to remember that to make a marker face, you actually use the word marker face in single quotes. But remember it's here, and feel free to refer back to it or Google it. All this stuff is out there. I don't really expect you to memorize it. But it's good to, um, um, to know they're out there and that you can really customize your graphs. OK, input, output. And uh, I believe that wraps up the Appendix C. The next video will be for the assignment.